I've, I've invited my good friend Greg here over to the Royal Institution to have a bit of a barbecue. Uh, but to make it a bit more interesting, I thought that we should do this barbecue without any coals. <laughs> so we've come up with a few alternative ways of cooking our food here. Uh, and Greg, over the uh, BritLab channel, you're going to be uh, using some chemistry, is that right? Yeah, yeah, so we've gone for some quite hazardous chemistry processes to try to cook steak. So if you're new here and you like what we do, then feel free to reward us with a sub and look out for the link at the end to uh, go to the BritLab page and see Greg and me playing around with some chemistry. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe to them when you're over there as well. Okay, so this, um, so this little device is gonna pump some mains electricity through a little bit of steak. So I've got that steak there. I've also got this bit of steak over here. I've been soaking it in salt water to try and, try and uh, increase the conductivity and hopefully that'll give us a bit more. Action. So, and because clearly you really like salty steak. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Who doesn't love a bit of salty steak? Oh yeah. This, hopefully we should see some uh, action, but well, I'm not so it's like, anything. Yeah. Okay, great. Right. Uh, oh, oh, it's, it's, uh, it's we're getting bubbles. We're getting fizzing fizzing. And it's turning white. It's cooking. It's cooking. It's cooking. It's, cooking. it's working. Oh. So what's the setup here, Andy? So we're plugged into the mains. Yeah, we're plugged into the mains, um, and we're also uh, we're also plugged into a kettle down here. <laughs> oh, there we go. The kettle is actually just acting as a resistor. It's, it's making sure I'm, I'm not drawing too much current, basically. So we're plugged into the mains. We've got 240 volts uh, passing through the stake. So oh. the electricity is going up yeah. through one fork, yeah, conducting exactly. through the meat because you've put salt in it. Oh, yeah. oh, oh wow. lovely. That's genius. Smells all right, doesn't it? Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Quickly stepped away there. Yeah. So the reason why it's cooking is that we're pushing all these electrons through, all this electricity through the steak. And as the electrons are being forced through, they're bumping into all the other, all the atoms in the steak and all the molecules and transferring all that energy. And because the steak doesn't conduct that well, you have to push those electrons really hard and then they transfer a lot of energy when they bump into things. So this process is called dual heating, basically the way that electricity uh, heats things up as it flows. And that was orange as well, was that? That was orange, orange. yeah, so, so that's, that's, that's really interesting. When the, because I was so, soaking this in salt, sodium chloride, the sodium ions in there, when the electricity passes through them, they excite the ions and you get that orange glow, which is the same orange you get in uh, sodium street lights. Oh, yeah, sort of yeah. characteristic colour of sodium. Safety first. So, in, indeed. <laughs> Exploding sausage and LEDs. Yeah. Okay, ready? Yeah. Oh! It works! <laughs> yeah, we've got a meat circuit going on here. That is, that is amazing. That's, that is amazing. That's, that's yeah. groundbreaking science yeah. happening right there okay. at the Royal Institution. So what we're hoping to do is to, uh, what we were hoping to do before it started to pour with rain outside. Uh, was Good old to, British summer. Yeah, um, was to uh, use the sun's radiation to uh, shine on the uh, parabolic dish, focusing all of that energy at this one point at the focus of the parabola mm -hmm. um, to cook the steak. The parabola has this interesting property that, um, that when you have uh, parallel beams arriving on the par parabola, all those, all those beams, wherever they hit the surface, all get reflected to the same point. Mm -hmm. so, so it's kind of collecting all the energy that falls over this whole area and focusing it down onto one point. So you can actually create an amazing amount of heat. Um, and is that why you've got two? So that yes. if you fire one at one, does that produce Parallel Exactly, yeah, parallel so, so, so there's exactly the same thing in reverse. So, so if you produce radiation at one focus, it will spread out and then get reflected and you'll have parallel, parallel beams and then, and then obviously collected at the other focus. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll look, oh, it's going, it's going, it's going. Yeah. I, I say, I'll look next to it for smoke and we're getting smoke. That doesn't look bad at all. I, I mean, that's almost edible. Yeah, I'd say that. Should we try it? I think we should. Yeah, okay. I think we should. You got that? Yeah. And then flip it over? Yeah, and, it's and the other side is rare. Yeah, but warm. Let's go for it. Yeah. I'll go, I'll, yeah. I'll... Sorry, I've thoroughly manhandled your bit, but you know. Thanks, mate. Mmm, that's delicious. That's great. Mmm. Um, that's yeah. another winner. That is another winner. <laughs> this is going so much better than we ever thought it would. Um. I've got a little bit of alcohol at the bottom. It's isopropyl alcohol, which is yep. not, not your regular ethanol kind. So I'm sloshing this around. So in there, we yeah. have the alcohol yeah. mixed with the oxygen. Exactly. In a vapour, so it's yeah. a perfect combustible mix. Yeah. And we're just going to have a bit of a couple of toasted prawns. Um, I haven't got any paprika, oh. so one thing I forgot. Whoa! <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, that was my bad, I flinched. <laughs> you know, I was like... 
<laughs> it's just like a Saturn V rocket, isn't it? You know, just we've got the fuel there pre-mixed with the oxygen, so it's all ready to burn, mm. and all that thrust is, is coming upside down. I guess it's like an upside down. It's like an upside five down Saturn V. Yeah. But you know, if you need to barbecue a prawn, you've got to turn your rocket upside down, as, and, the, and as the proverb goes, <laughs> <laughs> and potentially send a, a prawn into space. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's, it's warmish. It's not it's mm. not crispy. I think we can do better. I think we can do better. I think what we need to do is almost strap the prawn down because at the moment yeah. your upside down Saturn V is trying to blast the prawn off into space. Yeah. Okay. Is that right. Right. Yeah. Now the gauze on top. I mean, I don't know why people haven't done this before, really. This is surreal. It's an interesting uh, whoosh rocket, isn't it? Whoa! That might be it. Prawn shape on it. Amazing. <laughs> uh, do you like isopropyl prawns? I'll give it a go. Really? Yeah. Is it warm? It's warm. Yeah. It tastes a bit disgusting. Yeah. To be honest with you. <laughs> Weird that. Okay. Well, that was pretty good. That was I amazing. Over, overall, I think we've done well. So we we electrocuted a steak. That yeah. that worked well. That was tasty. That was tasty. Yeah. We uh, we used the parabolic mirrors. We had the heat lamp going. That yeah. was tasty as well. Yeah. The prawn. You know, mm. it was fun, but I'm not going to say that's the best way of cooking no, a prawn I've no. ever seen in my life. So that was the extreme physics approach to, to, to a barbecue. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so if you want to check out the extreme chemistry approach, then uh, click on the link, head over to Brit Lab, and see how Greg and I got on over there. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And fiery. Yeah. So yeah, so, so that's about it. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, I hope you liked what you saw here. Uh, yeah, and see you next time. So here's the iron. Oh, you want that bit a bit more cooked, sir? Okay. <laughs> Oh, the, the edge just there, we just sear it for you. Andy. Yeah. Of the RI channel. What do we think? Have we successfully cooked a piece of steak? In a way, yeah. <laughs>